Good evening, my friends, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yes. What beautiful singing, wow. I wanna, I wanna thank the choir for being here. You sound beautiful up there, that's amazing. And I wanna thank Ryan for being here in such amazing playing as always. And our tech crew and all of the people who are, are involved in our service tonight. There's very many people, so you're in for a big treat. And I want to thank you all for the invitation not to believe everything you sing. <laughs> We're using traditional lyrics, and I realize that they might not necessarily go along with everyone's theology. So um, it's, it's a matter of honoring the tradition of, the, of how they were written and the, the time that they were written in and for. So uh, thank you for going along with that. No one is ever really prepared for Christmas. If, you, if we were really all prepared, if every gift had been contemplated and had been obtained, if every present was beautifully beribboned, if all the goodies our friends deserved were baked and cooled and stored just so, if each and every person we love was gathered for our celebration, if we never snapped at someone we care about, or stopped short of being all that we could be. If our minds were 100% loving and our hearts were 100% generous, then truly we would be ready and truly we would not need Christmas quite so much. So come Christmas, most needed of seasons, come with a reminder that love does not depend on perfection but on the willingness to risk connection. Come into the unready manger of our hearts that we may feel the warmth of new life and give flesh to the promise of hope that cries to bring healing into our world. Come Christmas, come love, come hope. Be, be born in our unready hearts on this silent and holy night. And may we celebrate the sound of children, whether it is a silent and holy night. They, they say a story can carry a truth far greater than literal truth. We Unitarian Universalists know the value of stories. We know they carry truth. We know they carry more truth than literal truth. We know they carry more truth than just the time period of the story. And maybe we can't believe a virgin gave birth to the Son of God. But we can believe that all births are miracles worthy of celebration and wonder. Maybe we can't believe angels brought revelation, but we can believe the first to be revealed through the actions and words 
Maybe we can't believe the angels sang to shepherds, but we can believe that revelations about life can come from even the most humble places. Maybe we can't believe that Jesus brought back the light by redeeming our sins, but we can believe in a leader, teacher, and prophet who brings illumination to the lives of those who wish to listen. Maybe we can't believe the Christmas story, but we can believe that it is a story that points to a truth greater than we can possibly imagine. And long may we do so. And long may we do so. Emmanuel by Frederick Beekner. Christmas is not just Mr. Pickwick dancing a reel with the old lady at Dingley Dell or Scrooge waking up the next morning a changed man. It is not just the spirit of giving 
abroad in the land with a white beard and reindeer. It is not just the most famous birthday of them all, and not just the annual reaffirmation of peace on earth that is often reduced so that people of many faiths or no faith can exchange Christmas cards without a qualm. On the contrary, if you do not hear in the message of Christmas something that must strike some as blasphemy and others as sheer fantasy, the chances are you have not heard the message for what it is. Emmanuel is the message in a nutshell. Hebrew, for God is with us. And that's where the problem lies. The claim that Christianity makes about Christmas is that at a particular time and place, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity came to be us, be with us himself. In a town called Bethlehem, a child was born who, beyond the power of anyone to account for, was the high and lofty one, made low and helpless. The one whom none can look upon and live is delivered in a stable under the soft, indifferent gaze of passion. Year after year, the ancient tale of what happened is told raw, preposterous, holy, and year after year, the world in some measure stops to listen. The word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. A dream as old as time. If it is true, it is the chief of all truths. If it is not true, it is of all truths the one that people would most have be true if they could make it so. Maybe it is that longing to have it be true, that is at the bottom even of the whole vast Christmas industry. The world speaks of holy things in the only language it knows, which is a worldly language. Emmanuel, we all must decide for ourselves whether it is true. Certainly the grounds in which to dismiss it are not hard to find. Christmas is commercialism. It's a pain in the neck. It is sentimentality. It is wishful thinking. The shepherds, the star, the three wise men make believe. Yet it is never as easy to get rid of as all this makes it sound. It is to dismiss one of the most fragile yet enduring visions of our own childhood and of the child who continues to exist in all of us. The sense of mystery and wonderment. The sense that on this one day each year, two plus two adds up not to four, but to a million. What keeps the wild hope of Christmas alive year after year in a world more notorious for dashing all hopes is the haunting dream that the child who is born that day may yet be born again, even in us. Emmanuel,
in given the Zoomer splits. We don't want fits. We don't want any fits. This is a reading of the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. And it came to pass in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill to all. When the angels had left, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages, 
the sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves. What have we done to so affront nature? We interrogate and worry, God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate, which crouches, breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now, louder than the explosions of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace, a harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say, come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Janus, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues the coming of hope. All of the Earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at our world and we speak the, world aloud, the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves, and we say without shyness, or apology, or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul.
The Camels Speak by Lynn Unger. Of course they never consulted us. They were wise men, kings, star readers, and we merely transportation. They simply loaded us with gifts and turned us toward the star. I ask you, what would a king know of choosing presents for a child? Had they ever seen a baby born to such simple folks, so naked of pretension, so open to the wind? What would such a child care for perfumes and gold? Far better to have asked one born in the desert, tested by wind and sand. We saw what he would need, the gift of perseverance, of continuing on the hard way, making do with what there is, living on what you have inside, the gift of holding up under a burden, of lifting another with grace, of kneeling to accept the weight of what you must bear. Our footsteps could have rocked him with the rhythms of the road, shown him comfort in a harsh land, the dignity of continually moving forward. But the wise men were not wise enough to ask. They simply left their trinkets and admired the rustic view. Before you knew it, we were turned again toward home carrying men only half willing to be amazed. But never mind, we saw the baby, felt him reach for the bright tassels of our gear. We desert amblers have our ways of seeing what you chatterers must miss. That child at heart knows something about following a star. Our gifts are given, have no doubt, his life will bear the print of who we are. Merry Christmas. So you are going to hear the choir sing in Estonian. Rather than trying to see if you can spot a word in the Estonian language, I invite you to just let the harmonies wash over you as the choir offers you this gift for this night. This is winter night.
so beautiful. Thank you. I had the great honor of being present in the room at the birth of my granddaughter, Boston. The moment she arrived, I felt the room light up with this new life, this brand new presence bursting with brilliance. It was profoundly miraculous. Yet, I felt at a loss for the best way to acknowledge and honor the magnitude of this miracle, this little being coming into the world. I mean, when in our culture have we ever been taught how to greet a baby coming into the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> and then I brought her four year, four year old half sister in to see her and to say hello. And her sister immediately started to sing. She started to sing this beautiful sweetest, most glorious song of love and tenderness that she was just making up. She was just making it up. And in her little girl sing-song voice, it was a song of greeting, a song of welcoming, and a song of blessing. Why didn't I not know this? I'll never forget the beauty of that moment and the lesson of life from her big sister. I wish all babies could be blessed at birth in this way. The birth of a child is filled with great wonder and mystery, like a seed that has just opened within life. It is a time of joy and a time of tears beyond all understanding. And yet when someone dies, one can feel the same light disappear, vanishing into the mystery and it is a time of grieving, of great heartbreak, beyond all understanding, even if one does not know this person. If Jesus was the light of the world, it was because he truly understood the value of life, the value of this great light within each of us. It was because he was so committed to the timeless teachings of love, compassion, justice, and peace over all other concerns. He had the radical belief that these could be and should be the lived values on the earth. Learning to live from this perspective, being committed to the depth of love, compassion, justice, and peace, is to return to one's own essence, remembering and allowing the light within to fully shine, that light that is still in every cell of your being right now. What if the true meaning of baby Jesus's birth into this world to call us all back to our own essence, our own light within. It was a powerfully radical notion 2,100 years ago, and it is still a radical way of being. And yet, perhaps this is the way of evolution, the only way that we can save ourselves through the power of love and save our planet, I might add. Every day our lives are complicated, unpredictable, amalgamations of emotions, thoughts, and actions. Our light is so easily obscured by fear and anger and hatred and even just neglect and being tired. We all have regrets and we all endure frustrations, lost opportunities, tragedy, and deep lasting heartbreak. But every year, the cycle comes around again to this moment, 
this time where the world seems to stop and pause in quiet stillness, awaiting the birth of a child. Could it be that this is an invitation yet again to remember your own innocent brilliance and know that song of love that can sing the great blessing of life, that only you can sing that great blessing of life. For I think we all sing that song differently. So my friends, as you settle into a pause of this moment, your own stopping place, can you invite this innocent child to emerge and enliven you with the quiet joy of life itself, that very essence of who you are from the very beginning? Can you do it? No matter your age, you are still filled with possibility. No matter your past, renewal and rebirth is also part of your cyclical nature, just like the seasons, just like all of life. The power of love has always been the most important power even when we dismiss it. As we fret and worry about the state of the world, we cannot find our way forward without this developmental leap of living from a place of love. Is this not the essence of Jesus's teaching? It has always been the path towards true hope. The light is returning, my friends. May you feel that light rising within you. And may we heal ourselves and the world with the power of love we bring from the very moment of our birth. May it be so. And I share with you, in closing, one of our favorite poems written by the Reverend Sophia Foz, who's a legend in, a Unitarian, in our Unitarian Universalist world as um, a renowned religious educator from about 30, 40 years ago. And so the children come. And so they have been coming always in the same way they come born of a seed of man and woman. No angel heralding their beginnings, no prophets predicting their future courses, no wise man seeing a star to point their way, to find a babe that may save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Fathers and mothers, sitting beside their children's cribs, feeling glory in the wondrous sight of love, of life beginning. They ask, when or how will this new life end? Or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for wondering, and a time for worshiping. Thank you. And now we will take our, our offering. So that was Pete Buckmeyer saying that he um, invites us all to join in celebrating the birth of their grandson. What was his name, Pete? Desmond, Desmond George Anderson. Desmond George Anderson, born yesterday. 
Congratulations, Pete. That's fantastic. And with that, I would like to, um, we're, now we're going to take our offering. And our special offering this evening is going to the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, which is, of course, related to the Unitarian Universalist Association, but it is its own nonprofit, non sectarian organization advancing human rights together with an international community of grassroots partners and advocates. They work around the world, all over the world, um, supporting um, our values as Unitarian Universalists. They focus on international justice, accountability, climate justice, migration justice, advocacy for human rights and grassroots partners. So please, my friends, support the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee as they live out our values in the world. Thank you. yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. Next year all our troubles will be miles away. Once again as in olden days, happy golden
I told you we had treats tonight. That was beautiful. So beautiful. So my friends, I invite us now, as the lights begin to dim, to turn inward in a time of meditation. Let us just feel our feet on the ground. Feel our breath moving in and out. And settling our minds in our hearts. Feeling that spark of life, that essence of who you are when you were born, coming into this world. That amazing holy moment of each child's birth. Pete's new grandson, the children in this room, everyone, all of our beloveds. Can you feel all that you love? truly and deeply in this moment of peace? Can you feel that glow of love around you and within you? Can you feel that light of this miracle brought into being and renewed each moment from love. Settle into your heart and feel the blessing of life that was given to you and that shines from you. May this moment be a time of renewal, of remembering who you are, remembering all that you are capable of, all that you are made of. You are the angels. You are the baby that's born. You are the spark of life. May we carry the awe and wonder of being alive and filled with hope into the world to renew the light of hope for this is the true gift of Christmas. You are the gift. Those next to you are the gift. We hold each other with love and in peace. Amen. Our beautiful chalice is a symbol of that divine light. And in a moment, we will pass the light from the chalice to each of you, symbolizing all that is awakening 
and all that is within you, that very essence. But as we carefully light our candles, please take your unlit candle and tilt it towards the flame. Please do not tilt the candle that is already lit. We can go ahead and turn more lights down. Thank you. We can just turn them all off. It would be beautiful. Please join together as we sing Silent Night.
Let us savor this beautiful moment with these flames in the darkness. Take a moment to look at the flame that you are holding and take it into your heart. Yes, it is surrounded by darkness. What does this flame represent to you? Know that it came from our chalice, the light that we all share. Yet it is also your unique spark of life that keeps it lit. It resides within you always, there to warm you and to light your way in this newly emerging year. Carry this flame with you now and always in your heart. You may blow out your candles and let them cool before tipping. So stay with me a moment in the darkness. <laughs> As we close with these words by Tom Shade. Night has fallen. Stars beckon in an indigo and velvet sky. Somewhere, a baby is born. Tonight, the world lazes in a love of goodness, while glories stream from heaven afar, and God is meeting us tonight where we are. So be not afraid and be of good cheer. We wish you each and all a very Merry Christmas. The hopes and fears of all the years have been met. So rest, so rest beside the winding road and hear the angels sing. Merry Christmas and good night.